Uh, as of today, Node.js supports both Windows, Linux, as well as Macintosh pretty well. Uh, natively, it was inspired for Linux-based systems, but uh, the support is pretty good even today also. There are some quirks with Windows regarding the number of folders, <coughs> sorry, number of folders that it can nestedly create and so on. These are some things which might be a cause of concern when working with uh, Node.js. Um, primarily working with NPM modules. So while deleting a project or removing it and so on. So if I'm not wrong, in Windows you can delete only projects which are 40 levels nested deep. If you have deeper nesting, uh, you might run into other issues also. So, yeah. so we'll look into that also a bit later for Windows. So just a quick poll check. Uh, how many of you would like to do stuff hands-on as we go along? I cannot promise everything, but uh, we'll try to do small things on your machines to set up. So quick check if anybody would like to do that. Okay. Two yes, three yes, four. Looks like everybody would like to do it. Great. So then in that case, right, uh, I am using a Macintosh, uh, Apple Mac Book Pro to do this. Um, if you guys are Windows users, you might run into some issues while working with command line interface of Node.js. So the native command prompt of Windows uh, is a bit tricky and sometimes might land you into issues. For that, I uh, recommend you guys downloading the git scm. So you can go to git-scm.com. Yes, Linux is same as the Mac, but there are uh, the support for Linux is not same as the Mac. Uh, they are different distributions. You might run into different issues with Linux when compared to a Mac. So uh, that was a question by Vasudev whether Linux should be same as Mac. So there's a small difference. So, uh, most of the packages do support, but there are issues. Okay, coming back to our uh, Windows people. Uh, so if you are using Windows, I highly recommend using the uh, command prompt which you get from Git SCM. So if you did not already know, Git is a concurrent versioning system, something similar to subversion, but it is a bit different on how it's saved by it. So if you're not familiar, you can go through the documentation. The only thing you're looking forward from the Git SCM download is the Git bash. So most probably Windows guy, guys might run into issues, so I highly recommend using the uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so we are using the. Oops, sorry. So, uh, so while working with Windows command prompt, it might get a bit tricky while running Node commands. So that is why we are using Git SCM on Windows to manage all these things. Git SCM provides a Git bash, which is basically a shell to work with Windows command using the Linux syntax in a very simple term, but it is way sophisticated than that. So, uh, that's why we use Git SCM to manage all our command line. And if you did not already know, Node.js runs mostly on command line. Everybody, we can all go to the site called as nodejs.org. This is the official site for Node.js. You must have already landed here a few times by now. <coughs> so here you can see the information about Node.js, its documentation and so on. I'll uh, quickly walk you through setting up uh, Node.js from here. One option is that you can click on the install button here. So if you see on the bottom left hand corner of my screen, you can see the it's a node-0.12.2.pkg file. If you're a Windows user, you might get an EMC version of it and so on. So if you would like to download a specific version of uh, Node.js, you can click on the download links on the top of the page and then you will be landing into a section where you'll find all the installers for your application. If yours is a 32-bit installer, you can pick that, 64-bit, and so on. If you would like the source code, you can download the tar zip file and then build it locally also. Building from a source file is not part of the training, so we would directly be downloading the installer and start working. So for me, I'm using the Mac, so I'll click on the download link for the Mac OS X.pkg file, and this is going to download an installer for me. I'm going to put it up in some place where I remember. And then once the installation is completed, you can click on the link and you'll be able to see the same 
uh, installation process with any software. Node.js installation is one of the most easiest installations I have seen so far because once you have Node.js installed in your machine, the possibilities are literally unlimited. Uh, we'll explore that as we go along. So you can click on continue. There are no specific settings. All you need to do is agree and then install. So as far as my system goes, I already have Node.js installed, so I'm going to cancel the installation process. Great. So for all the people who have installed Node.js, right? So since you don't have Git SCM installed on your Windows machine, all the other users or everybody can open their command prompt or the uh, terminal in your system. Once you open the command prompt or terminal, you need you should be able to run node space minus p. <coughs> Excuse me. And it should give and it should give you the version of Node.js that you are running. This is a small check on if Node.js is working or not. If you are not able to see node minus v, it gives a command like node is unrecognized or is not a command. You can just ping and then we can copy. So this is one indication that node has successfully installed on your machine. So some Windows users after installation of Node.js also might get an error saying that node is not a recognized command. So after the session you can restart your system so that your environment variables are updated. If still node, uh, the environment variables are not updated, which happens in a very rare scenario, you can open the location where node.exe is present and add it to environment variables. So this way you can access node minus v on your machine. So when you're using git uh, SEM or a git bash to run these commands, a lot of them will be very similar to how you do things in uh, Linux. So in your machines, you can just type node and hit enter. When you just type node and hit enter, you'll be entering into a node shell. This is called as node ripple, R-E-P-L. It stands for read, eval, print, loop. It's as good as your browser's console. Typically, if you open the Chrome browser and run a command inside its console, this is exactly the same as how it happens in the Node.js because they both run the same V8 engine for JavaScript processing. When you hit Node, you get this terminal. This should happen both in Windows as well as Mac. Now you can type in simple JavaScript commands like var a equal to 10, var b equal to 20, var c equal to a plus b, and then you can say console.log c. This is the node print read eval print loop which is pretty similar to other programming languages shell. The big burning question of JavaScript, if you see this, we ran the same commands what we ran inside the browser inside the node process, right? So the biggest difference between running node inside a browser and running node inside your node shell or node.js application is the global object. Inside a browser, the global object is a window. You look at it logically, a window makes sense because you're running everything inside a window. This is the global object is a window. Whereas when you run node inside, when you run a program inside Node.js, the global object is something called as a process. So that makes more logical sense because this runs on a process. In your read eval print loop, if you just type the word process and hit enter, you can see the entire information of your Node.js the title, the version, the module load list, the way in which the bindings and other things happen, the versions of the node modules which is installed on your machine, the architecture, the platform, and so on. All the installation locations, properties, and information regarding your application. So this variable called as process is the global variable. So if I'm not wrong, process.pid gives the process ID for the thread in which Node.js is running on the machine. This is the primary difference between JavaScript on the client versus JavaScript on the server. The global object is window and things are event driven from more of a, uh, of a HTML or a visual element perspective. Whereas when you run JavaScript on the server or inside the Node shell, it runs on a process level. 
Does this clear? The main difference between JavaScript on the client and JavaScript on the server. As you can see in the read eval print loop, the you can write same JavaScript programs as you have done. You can even create functions and execute them here just to test it out. But to make things simple, we're going to do in a different way. So you can kill this uh, node terminal by pressing Control C twice, and then you'll be out of the node ripple. To keep this training more organized, and in case we do any uh, trainings, uh, any examples in the session, during the session, you can create a, a, a folder structure on your machine which is similar to mine, like this, and then you can use that to work with it. So primarily we are going to look at uh, a couple of small examples in Node.js so that you can get a feel of how to write a Node.js program and how to execute it. You can create a folder called as code examples. Since this is the first session, I'm calling it session one. I'm going to create a new folder inside it called as example one. So when you look for the code on Edureka's site while browsing through it, the folder structure is going to be pretty similar to this. So since this is the first example, I'm going to create a new file inside it. So you must have uh, assumed by now that any file we work with in JavaScript area is going to have an extension called as .js. Sorry, in Node.js, we're going to use .js extension. This particular file is a simple JavaScript file where you start writing your JavaScript code. So I'll just create a function called as add. Then we'll have two variables called as x and y. And we say return x plus y. A simple JavaScript program. And then I'm going to call the function with an argument 1 comma 2. I'm going to assign it to a value called as z. And then I'm going to console.log z. We can create a JS file anywhere on your machine, something like this. And the way you execute a node application is that you would open a command or a prompt at that location. So probably I'm going to close this prompt which is pointed to my root folder and then open another prompt at the folder where the index.js application is present, that is this. Now the way I execute this program is run node index.js and then you should get the output. I'm going to give you two minutes to run this example on your machine and check it out. If anybody is facing any issues, feel free to drop me a question. So I am hoping that everybody has completed, uh, is able to run this. So this should give a basic feel of running a JavaScript application inside the Node.js environment. This is not rocket science and this is not the typical hello world program that we usually run. Just a program where you can see some kind of operation going on. So I had a couple of questions from the guys here say asking about the IDE and tools and plugins and so on. Primarily there is no official IDE like Eclipse for Java or Visual Studio for .NET for working with uh, node based applications. I've been working with a quite a lot of editors till date and I found Sublime Text to be one of the perfect examples or perfect editors for working with uh, Node.js. In this session we are not only going to focus on Node.js, we're going to talk about both end-to-end -end development using JavaScript. So if I have seen that Node.js is one of the, uh, sorry, the Sublime Text editor is one of the best editors out there for developing web based web technology based applications. <clears throat> Sublime text is very lightweight and easy to use. You can get that. If you would like to shell out a few bugs and want a more professional editor, you can consider using WebStorm. 
WebStorm is an IDE which has built-in tools for node debugging. We're going to look at node debugging if you're not using WebStorms, how to do debugging of a Node.js application here. So, <clears throat> sorry. Coming to uh, Sublime Text, uh, there are packages out there which you can install along with Sublime Text to work with it. As I mentioned earlier, Sublime Text does not get does not install all these plugins by default. There is a site called as PackageControl.io. Depending on the version of Node.js you have installed on your uh, Sublime Text you have installed on your machine, you can pick up the script for Sublime Text from here. So. For example, you have downloaded Sublime Text 3, which is an open source IDE. You can copy this complete script, go back to your Sublime Text, press Control tilde, and you get this shell for pasting the place. There are two areas, one on the top, which shows the process of the execution, and one at the bottom, where you can paste this command and execute it. When you execute this particular command inside your freshly installed Node.js, you get the support of package control. You can then press Control shift p on Windows, Command-Shift-P on a Macintosh, and then you can type install. When you type in install, you get this option of installing packages in Node.js. You guys can probably play through the video and see what I've mentioned. And then when you hit enter, you get a list of packages that are supported by uh, that are supported by uh, the IDE. As of now, there is one one package which I recommend you guys to use that is called as opening a terminal. So when I do a right click, I have an option of open terminal here. So this is a simple option that you would need when you are working with Node.js because you would be executing the code inside your terminal. When you search for a package, and then you can search for terminal here and then you would get this package and you can install it. Once that is installed, Sublime Text might ask you to restart it. If not, you can directly right click on any file and you should see this option called as open terminal here. And when you execute that, a terminal will be opened inside that folder so that you can easily execute your code program. This is a simple plugin we can add for now. I'll show you a few more plugins as we go along. 